Welcome. Uh, my name is Michael Calabrese. I direct the Wireless Future Program at the New America Foundation, a big tank here in D.C., of course. And this is the broadband revolution. We're developing a national broadband strategy to keep the U.S. prosperous in the 21st century. I think we should start with the White House broadband czar. Someone to take charge of coordinating the effort and making sure that all of the needed resources are brought together. The first job is the federal government getting its act together, <laughs> making sure that all the agencies and departments are working in tandem. Is the Department of Housing and Urban Development making sure that every new low-income housing project is wired for high-speed broadband when the building goes up? When the Department of Agriculture makes its broadband loans, about making sure it multiplies rather than replicates the efforts of the Universal Service Fund. If 99% of schools and libraries now have the internet, might the Small Business Administration be interested in seeing if we could leverage that to create a wireless network in surrounding areas where there is no broadband currently available? Shouldn't the Department of Education be brought in to promote computer literacy so our kids can learn how to use all of these tools that are going to spell the difference between opportunity and poverty for them? The way, the way econ economists look at this is externalities. There are things that broadband brings, benefits, that don't accrue to the company itself that invests in it. Otherwise, the, the profits that are derived from these broadband networks don't take into account all the benefits to society as a whole. As a result, there won't be an optimal level of investment if you look at the marketplace alone. Uh, that's why our global competitors have implemented broadband strategies. Uh, we've made some progress here in this country, but we're behind. I won't go into all the statistics and you know them all. But we face challenges on adoption, on availability, competition, affordability. And the one key factor I like to emphasize, because we all fight about penetration rates, no point getting into those debates. I mean, there, there should be a question. America should be number one by any standard. And why are we sitting here debating, well, it's really not number 15, you take into account households and move up to number 12. Isn't that great? Well, I think we have to be a little bit more ambitious in our goals. I think America should be number one. That's how we have led the world in our economic power in the, in the 20th century, and we're going to lose that edge in the 21st century if we don't do better. Uh, according to the most recent data, we're seeing that the US is 11th in the price per megabit. That's the one statistic I like to look at. You go to other countries like Japan and they get uh, four times uh, as much uh, speed for, um, I guess we pay four times as much for broadband that is one tenth as fast as Japan. We can't continue the leadership that way. Broadband is an input for every other good and service in society. And that's so true. And on top of all of that, they're all expanding at the same time. You can't look at one, one area and say, that's all the broadband you need for that area, because they're all expanding at the same time. And as a person from Nortel recently put it, the key in looking at bandwidth capacity is video. As we move to higher and higher definition video, uh, the a uh, Humvee, she said, high definition video is the Humvee of broadband and as we move gradually into more and more usage of video, our internet traffic and our need, particularly at the local level, not necessarily at the core of the internet, but at the local level, is going to expand dramatically. So how much bandwidth capacity is enough? That's a very difficult question. It means, the question itself means a lot of different things in a lot of different contexts. Are we talking about a particular application? Are we talking about a local network? Are we talking about a national network? Well, the way we ask that question in our report is to say, how much bandwidth capacity as a nation should we be striving for to ensure that our residents, our businesses, and uh, our institutions have enough to be able to use the applications that will enable us to thrive as a nation in the emerging knowledge-based information economy. And that's what we try to do in our paper. Now, our own conclusion is that we should be striving toward at least 100 megabits 
uh, per second of uh, capacity by 2012, at least a gigabit by 2015, and that's all controversial. There are people who are going to say, well, we don't need all that uh, bandwidth capacity, at least everybody doesn't. Some are going to say that's not enough. It takes a long time to build networks, and by the time we build the networks out, we'll be past 100 megabits per second. We'll be up to gigabit level. Well, we tend to view that we come out closer to those who say we need, need more. Great nations build key infrastructure with a lot of headroom. They don't whine about advantages that others have, supposed advantages that others have. They do what it takes to be great and to stay great. Are we doing that? We haven't so far, but we can and we should and we will if the voices of all of us work together to do this. We need to move our leadership at the national level. We cannot get that last 16% without the help of a national broadband policy. No state, in my opinion, can do that. Um, and I would simply end by saying to you this. The resolution of representatives at Shudor and Markey, which is the Senate of Revolution 191, titled 100 Beggar the Nation, um, as a national goal, is very important that we support that. Why is that? As a very small child, I watched John Glenn and the astronauts train in the planetarium at UNC Chapel Hill. They trained to learn to actually, how do I guide myself by the stars as I try to <clears throat> circumnavigate the Earth? And what did it take? A national push by a person who said, we will get a man on the moon. You could have said a woman, right? But a person on the moon uh, within the next decade. And John Kennedy said that, and Lyndon Johnson and this country and the legislature delivered that. What we need is exactly that today is a push from the leadership in this country and all 50 governors and the territory leaders of our country to help us move forward in our states and in the territories. Our citizens really deserve nothing less. And our economy will not be the economy you and I have known unless we have that. Second example, from the state of Iowa. You'll see references to the state of Iowa in that report. And the moral of this story is economic vitality and competitiveness. Now, I'm not a native North Carolinian. North Carolinian, you could probably tell that by my accent. I grew up in Iowa. And uh, we've made lots of jokes over the years about it being a rural state and cows and plows and all those kinds of things. Uh, and the area that I come from is at, now actually a major economic magnet in the state of Iowa in the corn and soybean fields. The area around Cedar Rapids, seeing Cedar Rapids in Iowa City under floodwaters, that's, that's the latest uh, news that you have. But that part of the country invested early and significantly in the internet. So the economic and educational opportunity in that area is not just the University of Iowa. That whole corridor is, is now called as a magnet for all kinds of jobs. It has led to growth of the economy. It has led to much greater diversity in that part of the state of Iowa and great job opportunities. People come there and they stay there because of the quality of life and the quality of the jobs and the quality of education. And the internet made a difference. And if you look at the report, we'll find a specific example of looking at Cedar Rapids, Iowa, out competing another town, Waterloo, because of broadband in that community. A country as great as ours is going to need a lot of different solutions. What's most important here is that we're having this dialogue and I think it's fair to say that most of us in this room think it's urgent. We need to get moving. We need to move forward. We can't afford to sit back and let more time pass. If we're going to be a great nation, we've got to move now.